Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today, let's talk about the WWDC 2017 keynote address. Okay, so last night I watched the WWDC, which is the Apple Worldwide Developer Conference. They have it every year. It's usually where they announce the new, you know, the new OS, the new, you know, all the new developer tools and all that kind of stuff, right? And it's um, and it was it was pretty cool. It's, I mean, I guess I said it was last night. It was last night in England. I guess it was morning in California. But you know, it always everything everything comes on in England like during dinner time, right? So I'm cooking dinner and then also trying to, you know watch this right uh, and it was it was interesting it was I mean well I want to tell you guys what I thought of it now this is not I don't have any inside information I'm just, you know just my opinions based uh, you know as a developer as somebody who makes iPhone apps and you guys you know a lot of you guys make iPhone apps too so it'd be interesting to hear what you guys say but I watched most of it and for me these developer conferences it's a lot like watching the Academy Awards right because you you're sitting you know, you're all excited at the beginning but they just wear you down and you're just like oh man this is like long right and you, you watch every little thing and you're just waiting for the good parts right so 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 I, I watch it you know, under two modes right so first of all as a consumer or as a developer, right? So as a consumer, I was it was actually pretty good, right? They they talked about the um, there's a lot of hardware stuff, you know, and like the Apple HomePod, uh, it, was, it was called the HomePod, right? Which was like it was like the Amazon Echo or the or Google Home or whatever that's called, right? So the little speaker that sits in your house and you'd be like, you know, just in case your phone isn't around or whatever, I don't know, but you know, so it does all this kind of stuff. I had never really. I'm not, I've never been that excited about it. And I think it's because I don't know, there's no app store, there's no anything like that. I just, I don't know very much about it. I know it would be kind of cool to, to play around with for a little bit, but you know, they, they, I think the, um, I think Apple, Google, Amazon have a lot more enthusiasm about it than I do. But, but then there was a, like the new MacBooks uh, came out with more memory and everything, or the new iMacs uh, are coming out. And that, that's something I did, you know, I did get excited about because you know, I use a Mac every day, and the the only reason I'm a Mac guy, I'm not like an Apple fanboy, but I it's just because you know, I, in order to do iPhone apps, you need to have a Mac. I mean, some people ha have workarounds where they have Mac and Cloud and everything like that, or a Hackintosh, but I've just never, you know, it's just too much hassle. So, right, I just just got a Mac, a, you know, 16 gigabyte. A uh, uh, 15 inch MacBook Pro and lots of monitors attached to it and lots of USB hubs, right? But but still, you know, I, the the Mac looks good. And they announced a new iMac Pro for the professionals. So like 128 gigs of RAM, you know, four gigabytes of, of SSD, right? And that's something I, you know, it was like five thousand dollars, right? So that's some kind of thing that I would get if I didn't like alternatively want to get like a car or you know a mortgage or anything like that but anyway so that was really cool right and uh, and they talked about you know improvements to Siri right so that would be cool I'm not really I don't I use Android my, my normal phone is an Android but I have like a bunch of iPhones right because for testing and for for you know you can't show up to a client site and not even have a, an iPhone or an iPad I use an iPad Pro on a daily basis I use a Mac on a daily basis, but uh, you know, so when they talk about improvements to Siri, I think, yeah, that would be kind of cool, right? You know, that, yeah, that's kind of cool, right? So all that stuff, as a consumer, I thought, you know, that would be, there's lots of cool stuff to buy, right? If, if I could be, you know, persuaded, right? And then there was the other side where, you know, watching it as a developer, and as a developer, I thought, As a developer, I thought it was really, really boring, right? There wasn't anything new that I thought I, that I could use, right? There was, there was the new, there's iOS 11. And iOS 11, they talked a lot about the new ways they're gonna, you know, uh, render photos, with, you know, new, you know, uh, video, you know, photos, video, Siri, um, you know, the new home screen, all this kind of stuff. Uh, but nothing really that I could, nothing I could monetize, nothing as a developer that I could see to do. I mean, I. You know, maybe as a developer, you can add some Siri plugins or use. I mean, I'm sure they have some sort of SDK or something like that. But there's, I have no idea how to monetize that. I mean, I don't know if you, if you, you know, how people would pay for that unless you had like clients, like say Pizza Hut, they want to have some sort of Siri component and or whatever. So it's, it, you know, while all that stuff is cool as a consumer, as a developer, I was unimpressed. Right? They talked about the new App Store design, so. 
you know, the app store is going to be you know, revamped and everything. That was a bit interesting, but I still don't see how it's going to help yet, right? In contrast to Google I.O., everything seemed to be very much focused towards the developer. This seemed to be with the developer in mind and developers were there, but it seemed to be very much you know, towards a consumer too. Like, you know, like I was watching it as a, as a customer, as a consumer, I'm thinking, yeah, well, yeah, I might buy that. I might buy that. But as a developer, I'm thinking, I don't know how, to add, I don't know how that's going to improve my life. Right. And you know, the app store, we have that new today section so they can, you know, where they could feature an app before now they can really feature an app. Right. So, uh, so that was something that, that I, I was just unimpressed. So, so basically I just wanted to give you guys my opinion, not so much like as a, as a like as a, well, as, I'm a professional app developer and I use iOS all the time, right? And my biggest problem with this is every time we do an up, upgrade to OS versions, we have like a month or two where if you use like, um, if you use anything that's not native code, or even if you use native code, you have like a month or two of catching up where you have to make all these changes to your code. Or, you know, if you use something like uh, Ionic or like Cordova or any of the hybrid frameworks or even Corona SDK, you know, there's a while where nothing, just nothing works for a while. And it's just, it's a pain, right? So that's, that's coming up. And we, you know, for, for what benefit? I don't know, right? And then also, you know, it's just going to be uh, difficult. But one, one thing they talked about at the keynote was, you know, like 86%, I forget what it was exactly, 80 something percent of users are on iOS 10, right? So, you know, they have a much better adoption rate, whereas, you know, only like, like, I think it was four or five percent are on Android 7, which was, an, you know, unfair comparison because I think Android 7 is, is newer, but, you know, there's one thing with all the different phone manufacturers out there that getting a new Android version out there is really hard. And as a developer, we always have to think about that, you know, which, what's the lowest version of Android we're going to support. And that's something I just, I don't think about that much with, with iOS. So that's always, that's always a very positive thing there. Anyway, those are my opinions about it. Did you guys, I mean, did you see it? I mean, for those of you guys who are Android developers and you just want to say, you know, Apple sucks, go ahead, comment on it, say Apple sucks get it out of your system, right? But those of, for those of you guys who do iOS development or Mac OS development or whatever, let me know what you think because it is very possible that I just, that there was something really cool there and I just missed it. Maybe it was something just went over my head and you say, Eric, don't you realize it's really cool because Siri can do such and such for you? I mean, not as, a, not as an end user, but as a developer, right? That's more what I'm concerned about. How, how can we serve our users better with this platform? That's what I wanted to know. Right. So anyway, that's it for today. Uh, you know, really short today. Um, I'll talk to you guys. Well, that's it. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.